She's great, isn't she? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very inspiring. Yeah. Hey, is that you, Nick? Who came on the phone? Somebody call in? It is Nick. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay. All right, I'll just put your name on there. So we know. Okay, great. So yeah, this is uh, this is the true thing. Is uh, that uh, this is what you call horsepower when you just go at it, go at it the best you can, and keep inviting people. So it's, it's great. Um, so uh, anybody have any questions about the challenge? Anybody worried about anything or uh, have questions? I know Karen's been having a devil of a time putting people in. <laughs> Anybody have anything there? Shall we, shall I share a couple things from my uh, training I went to? Oh yeah. Yes. Yes, please. Okay, and maybe we could have David share a little something from his training too. <laughs> I see David shaved. Yes, I'm <laughs> up down up the mountain. <laughs> Do you want to go first? Oh no no no. Oh okay. You tell us the real stuff. Well, this is really fun to be able to share with you guys about Dave Blanchard because you know him. You heard, you've heard him. This was new to most of the people up there. And so it's really fun to be able to share with you guys because you've already gotten a sneak preview. That book of his is wonderful. So keep reading it if you haven't got it, got it all the way through. I haven't gone all the way through it, but it's good. And it's what he talked about. He talked a lot about tearing down walls and we saw him demonstrate how you really listen to someone and you listen for um, clues of what they're not saying and ask questions and uh, we you provide a safe place for them by looking them in the eye and giving them your undivided attention and it's a very great talent that very few people really have and so that that <laughs> Uh, helpful he was teaching that the uh, other thing was the idea of uh, when you are talking to someone really um, stifle yourself don't say anything I mean don't be the one giving answers even if they ask you questions I mean I guess at that point you can but what you're trying to do is ask them the right questions so that they will be able to discover the answers themselves and so it's it's more meaningful when you know when they the light goes on for them. So that was very very good. We actually got together in partners and and got to practice on each other. That was very good. Another thing that he talked about, I think, in our Salt Lake thing, you guys remind me, but he talked about um, you know just the idea of um, thinking and and uh, being being kind of still and thinking, who can I serve today? Did he talk about that? Do you guys remember in Salt Lake? Who can I serve today? Um, and it's kind of the idea. Do you remember that, Rob? I can't remember. Uh, I remember someone mentioning that because I missed that first part, but I think someone mentioned it in, yeah. the, presentations in the afternoon. Just really interesting. I mean, it's all. it was almost like you are waiting for heaven to bless you or to think who might need it because there is someone that needs it and and to just calm down on the lists and kind of you know just do what you can do some of you are a lot better at that than others of us who get all tied up about oh my gosh no matter how much time it's never enough time that i spend with thick shape for life and you know his assessments he did he um, he pulled them all together for this group of people up there. There were 70 people, and he put them all together. And he said they show similar. Um, there's a there's a similar feeling for everybody, and that is that they are working so hard they're worn out. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I think I can relate with some of that. And it was just kind of the idea of don't put so much pressure on yourself but instead seek for one person 
that you can call today. And anyway, it was just a, it was very, very helpful. And so I really, um, really enjoyed that. Then the other thought that you guys have heard before is instead of saying, I have to, I should to, I need to, I must do this stuff, to change the verbiage to, I want to, I get to, I choose to, I'm excited to. And then uh, this is kind of, it's hard to teach this to you because it's kind of out of context. context. But then he, he taught us to say, I will command and I will obey my command. Anyway, you write that down on a three by five card and put it all over your house. Don't get out of the bed until you say, I want to, I get to, I choose to, I'm excited to, I will command and I will obey my command. So anyway, just some really, really inspiring um, thoughts and I thought I'd just share that one with you. Anyway, David, tell us something oh. about whatever. Come on over here so they can see you. Well, you're doing good stuff. <laughs> well, I went to Africa and had a great time. It was, you know, it's, it was so much more than to say, oh, it was a fun trip. For me, it was a life-changing expedition on so many levels. And uh, especially now as I'm back home, I see analogies all over the place to real life. And uh, I think that Claudia wanted me to share some of those analogies that I've thought about, especially since coming home. Um, you know, when I first started climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, and it took six days, the whole up and down of it, we were encouraged to start walking very slowly from the very beginning. The African, the Swahili word for slow is pole. So our guides would say, pole, pole. I, although I'm saying it with an Italian accent, I guess. <laughs> they weren't saying it with an Italian accent, but they wanted to encourage us to, to save our energy and especially recognizing that later on, the going would get all the more tough because of the increase in altitude and the lessening of oxygen that was available to us. So uh, at the beginning, honestly, my, my head was kind of still back in the office and with responsibilities at home. You know how when you go on vacation, sometimes it takes a couple of days to really relax and get your mind to where you shouldn't be cranking out those regular daily worries. But I remember at the beginning, the first couple of days, especially thinking, wow, this is long. <laughs> and especially as we moved from the beautiful rainforest and jungle to different climate zones, because there are four or five different, very distinct climate zones as you go up the mountain. And you know, it's especially interesting in the beginning and less interesting later on. <laughs> and I just remember thinking, why would people do this? <laughs> Why do people come to Africa and climb this mountain? And I especially found it interesting when my son told me that he had heard something that I had missed in the orientation, and that was that Africa is filled with Africans who wonder why people come from all over the world to climb this big <laughs> mountain in their country, because they don't, they don't go to the bother, shall we say. I mean, they serve as guides and and rangers and porters and all of that sort of thing. But it's unusual to have Africans climb Mount Kilimanjaro, I, I understand. Anyway, my point is that at the beginning, you think, wow, this is taking forever, and gee, maybe I ought to be doing, maybe I shouldn't have come, maybe I should have picked other stuff to do on this trip. But then you just keep hanging on, and then you, you get an investment in it and recognizing that, wow, you're, you're feeling some, some enjoyment in, in the pursuit itself. And then all the way up to the extra exer exertions and travail of the final summiting day 
it's so exhilarating at the end that all of the other thoughts of, of tedium and boredom and, um, and fatigue just kind of melts away. And you realize that, that, that there is great joy and satisfaction in reaching the top of the mountain. And I, I can't help but think about that in, in my personal Take Shape for Life work that, you know, I have a real hard time doing something every day. It's so silly that there are some days that I don't, don't do anything with Take Shape for Life. And, and that doesn't get you up the mountain very fast. But just continuing one foot after the other then ultimately you reach the reward, whatever the reward for you might be. Maybe it's a particular title that you've been working for, uh, not title, but you know what I mean. Rank. Rank. Or maybe it's, it's, the sad, it's the fulfillment of goals that you've set or money that helps you meet the obligations of life and you know whatever you've established as your why in building the business. It just takes one foot after the other for a long time. And, um, you know, we don't need to wear ourselves out in the process either. We can go poly, poly, and, and go slowly enough so that it doesn't disrupt our lives. And I think that that's what I heard Claudia saying as well, that Dave Blanchard was really encouraging this group of 70 people up in Oregon that they didn't need to wear themselves out so much. Maybe they were working too hard in the process. And in fact, <coughs> maybe the answer sometimes is to go a little more I don't, know, I don't want to add words that he didn't mean. But. And I think too that uh, another huge analogy to life in, in my climb was the importance and the goodness of being involved with the team, that it's not just one person climbing solo to the top of Kilimanjaro. There were nine of us in our group, and with those nine people, uh, we had a support team of 24. There were guides and porters and a cook and a server, and, and uh, they were with us every step of the way. And so call that your bio network, call that the, 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 the support calls and and uh, the things that we're able to enjoy with, with our corporate offices and that sort of thing. And to support one another, that's the most encouraging and fun thing of all. And so satisfying when everybody is able to summit at the end and you've reached your goals and you've helped one another to, to accomplish great things. So Awesome. There you go. <laughs> that's awesome. So we, we can end our call with uh, the idea of the lines on paper and maybe make some lines on paper to, uh, about how many people you'll contact about the, the challenge and invite. When you go to invite them on your page, it's really a great idea. Even if you can't get a hold of people that, as you're making your client calls, I just say, hey, how you doing? Just checking on you. We're having this great challenge. I'm going to send you an invite. You ought to join. It's just a great support thing. And then I send them an invite. And if, if somebody gets on, man, I'm, I'm reminding them to invite people and, um, you know, take part, take part in this fun thing because you can get points. And the more excited you are yourself, then the more excited that they will be to take part. But if you're ho-hum about it, they're going to be ho hum about it, and they don't really care. So if you if you kind of get yourself excited, and I will, I can, and I'm excited, then it, it works out really, it really works out great. Also, um, I'm just remembering something else that is um, uh, Kim has started uh, lately, like today. You know how we call it the collecting yeses script. Well, she's changed her mind <laughs> because there's a lot of people who she says, well, do you use the collecting yes script? And they say, well, not really. And so she's going to call it the getting the word out script 
because we all are talking to people every day. But collecting yes, it's shutting some people down. So it's going to be now called getting the word out. Does that sound better to you guys? Yeah, it yeah. does sound good. It does, doesn't it? It sounds a lot more possible than, than the other. So, yeah, that's just great. Now, how many of you are signed up on a call? Just Karen, I think you are for sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. and, I, and you are too, Rob. Good. And I'm leading one. So, anyway, um, these calls are just wonderful. Karen, I really... I caught your enthusiasm from your call. Can you share something from your call that really turned you on? <laughs> well, first of all, the person that gave it was so energetic, you know, and there was just a lot of talking and not just like, say you, Claudia, but everybody was talking about everything and it was just really interactive. Good. Like, what kind of things do they talk about? Um, about the getting on the challenge. We talked a little bit about that and kind of what Kim did on that video that we just watched. And we talked about how many people we were going to contact. And I'm thinking, oh, I need 10 in my room. But somebody was saying, I'm going to get 100. I've already got that many in there. And I'm going, holy wall, you know, like, I thought 10 was a lot to me, it is, you know, but hey, wow. when you get that 10, it multiplies, it's crazy. Yeah, it does, but, and he said that he had people in there that he didn't know, and I said, well, how do you get people in there you don't know, and he says, well, people I do know invite their friends, and I says, oh, all well, right, I, I can understand that, so, but just everybody was talking, and it was just really good. Gee, that's great. Thank you, Karen, for sharing that, and you know, it's true. When you do talk to people about it, keep it light, keep it happy, don't go into big detail, just keep it fun, so that it's, it's just not a big deal. That I hardly even tell them about the, the prizes, I mean, I just, I just think it's a great way. You know, you, you have to take it from where you are. And for yeah. me, my thing is kind of like, I love the fact that it's teaching us habits, habits of health. I don't know. What angle do you take it at, Rob? Um, I take it at, uh, I kind of actually take it from both ends. I take it from the, you know, the money side, because I know, you know, unfortunately, sometimes you've got to appeal to some, you know, the people's greed, unfortunately. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> But, you know, but then I also approach it from the habits of health, too. You know, hey, it's great six weeks, you get healthy. <laughs> great. I, I just, I, I, try to, I try to at least include both. <laughs> That's great. How about you, Sheila? What do you do? You know, um, I have two or three other clients as I was doing client calls today. I, I got to commit to go in and do it. And I think the way I'm doing it is I'm pretty low-key about people. I don't pressure them. I just said, hey, you know. I, I sent you an email about this and I also included the newsletter. Have you seen it? And some of them said, yeah. And I, and I, and I just tell them, you know, some of my clients that have done the very best at losing and then maintaining their weight loss were involved in this challenge we did in January. And it's, it's something, the motivation of doing it for the team. Cause sometimes we, we, um, need that little motivation to say, I'm going to stay on program so it'll get a point for the team. And so if you want that kind of motivation, we'd love to have you part of a part of our team. So I don't know. Uh, that's great. Nick, tell us what you do. What, what's your angle when you talk to people about the challenge? Ah. Um, I, what do I do? I don't know. I just, I just, I take it that there is a fun aspect to it that it's a, a game. That, that's kind of what the angle I take. Just explaining that it's a, it's a game and it's going to be really fun. Yeah. That's great. I love this. David, how about you? Have you thought of it? I've just, I signed up last night, invited two people. That's all I've done. <laughs> You've got eight points. Yeah, but there you go. But it's yeah. exciting to listen to what you all are doing. and to Is make, it fun, the whole... Fun. The whole variety. Everybody has a different, a different way. And so, when you come from what excites you, that's what your people feel. So, great. You guys are awesome. 
Hey, as on the calls, even if you're signed up for calls, you can do this too. But the idea is you can get on any call that you can go into high fives, the group, or on the ED to be and choose any call and just listen in or contribute, whatever you want. If they call it lurk and learn. So because you learn so much and well you can tell from Karen, she really got a uh, had a great time today or yesterday was it yesterday on your call yeah, yesterday. yeah. yeah. and so yeah. just feel free to get on if you can anytime it's great anybody want to say anything questions okay this is fun you know when you get people in your room there's some things you want to do in order to help them succeed and also to get to know them better um, you see a name you don't know uh, you'll be able to find their phone number because it's in it's in there, and then the right? what'd you say? It's in the survey that they right, do. and they get five points for that survey, and so you'll want to call them and just say, hey, you know what? I'm the team leader. Just wanted to meet you, and is I just was trying to figure out your your health goals. And anyway, it's really great because um, you can then put them on your connections list list later. You know, if they don't have, they're not a, you're the coach. You're the only coach there is. And maybe they'll want to take part in it, but at least you've got all these extra connections. You want to get that uh, relationship built. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, this is a lot of fun, you guys. So how many are we going to um, contact in the next uh, few days? Anybody want to tell me how many lines on paper they want to make? I'm going to do 10. Good for you. Good for you. Anybody want to commit, Nick? Um, 10. 10 for you? Good. How about you, Rob? I'm going to have to sit this one out. Okay. I, I, I'm still working on moving, so it's... Oh, uh, yeah. So just do the best you can. You know, just to keep inviting every day anyway, you know. Yeah. Yeah, just won't purchase. Yeah, it's hard finding time to hit that phone. So yeah, do you also write a client support email or a, a connections email? Yeah. And have you sent this out in that? Ah, uh, yeah, I have. Good. Um, good. Good. Gotta good. get enough one sent out for this week. So. And then, if, if you've got your event on your um, Facebook page, that's a great way to watch for the likes. Um, okay. All right, Sheila, you have any words of wisdom? No, I, I need to, that was a good reminder to hear about the connections emails. I have not sent those out yet, okay. so I need to do that and then make at least 10 calls, but I'll try to do even more than that, so. You That's rock. Good. You guys are the best. Love you all, and upward and onward, horsepower behind this thing. Let's make it go. <laughs> hey, thanks, Claudia. Yeah. All right. Hey, Thank thanks. You. See you, Nick. And Bye. thanks for recording this. I've got... Okay. I've got some coaches that want to listen in that couldn't be. Yeah. Thank Great. you. All right. Well, hey, thanks, you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.